Hi and welcome in this new video. My name is Mark Lomati and I'm very excited to see you here because you will discover the Airflow user interface as of today. And if it is your first time here and you want to learn about Airflow and stay up to date with it, subscribe and click on the bell so you don't miss anything. If you take a look on YouTube, you will see some videos that have been made a while ago and obviously the user interface has improved quite a lot over the years. So you will discover the user interface, how does it work and what are the most important views according to what you want to achieve. So without further ado, let's dive in. The first page that you get as soon as you start Airflow is the DAX view. This is the list of your data pipelines. As you can see, we have four data pipelines. From left to right, you have some columns and let's begin with the first one. This toggle allows you to pause and unpause your data pipeline. So for example, you made a mistake in a DAG, then you pause the DAG, you fix the mistake and you unpause the DAG to schedule it again. Next, you have the DAG name and this corresponds to the DAG ID, the unique identifier of your data pipeline in the code. This name is unique and has to be unique. Also the owner. So basically you want to know what data pipelines belong to Mark. You can just click on Mark here or whatever the owner you want. And then you get only the data pipelines that belong to Mark. Remember that the owner is defined at the task level in your code, but you cannot attach permissions to the owners. Remember that the owner is not the same thing as the users that you have in your Airflow instance listed here. Okay, it's very important to make the distinction between the owners that you define in the code of your DAGs and the users that you define on the user interface. Next, you have the DAG run states, basically from queued to success to running and failed. From there, you get the current and past states of the DAG runs for a specific data pipeline. For example, here with BTC extract, you know that you have five DAG runs so far, four in success and one in failure. Next, you have the schedule interval, how often the scheduler runs your data pipeline. In this example, a daily means every day at midnight, but there are many other schedules. In addition, you have the last run corresponding to the last time the data pipeline was triggered, either manually or by the scheduler, and the next run, the next date at which the data pipeline will be triggered. By hovering this little icon, you can see the next run is in eight hours. Also, you have a lot of different states that you can monitor related to your tasks. As you can see, you have known, removed, scheduled, queued, running, success, and so on. But the point is you can track only the states of your tasks for the current or the latest DAG run. Next to the states, you have some buttons, one to trigger the DAG manually or to delete the DAG. And don't worry, you are not going to delete the DAG file, only the metadata related to your DAG and the links to access other views that we will see in a second. But before doing that, there are other things that you need to know about this page. And the first one is you have filters. If you want to see all of your data pipelines or only those that are active, not paused, or only the data pipelines that are paused, you can do that by clicking on active or paused. And more importantly, if you want to know what DAG runs are running, then you click on running. And if you want to know what DAG runs are in failure, then you click on failed. You don't need to go through a ton of pages to know what DAG runs are in failure anymore. You just need to click on failed. Very convenient. Another cool feature that I love and I'm sure you will love it too is the filter DAGs by tag. For example, you have a data pipeline with some tags like secret project or team A and you want to know what data pipelines have the tag team A. Then you click on team A and boom, you get the corresponding DAGs. Don't forget to remove this filter because it's very easy to forget it and then to wonder why you cannot see your other data pipelines. So don't forget to remove the tags when you are done with them. Last but not least, you have the auto refresh functionality so you don't have to hit F5 each time you want to see the latest states of your task instances and DAG runs. So that's it about the DAGs view, very useful, you will use it a lot. What else can you do? Well, if you click on one of your data pipelines, let's say BT extract, you access other views like the grid view. With the grid view, you have the history of the states of your DAG runs and task instances. The task instances are the squares and the DAG runs are the bars at the top. By default, you can see DAG runs summary, so max run duration, min run duration, the total number of success and failed DAG runs, as well as additional information. And if you want to know more about a specific DAG run, you just pick one. You can know when it was started, ended, the data interval for which it was triggered, and so on. If you want to know more about a specific task, same thing, you click on a task and you can see the state as well as the task ID, the run ID, the operator used and more. If you have many DAG runs and task instances to monitor and manage, 
the grid view is perfect for that. In addition, if you want to know what XCOMs a given task produces, then you can click on XCOM. And here you see that this task returns the following value that becomes a XCOM. In addition, if you want to rerun BTC extract across all DAG runs, you can do that by clicking here. Then you select all task instances, click on actions and take the action that you want, for example, clear to restart all the tasks at once. This is very convenient. Next to the grid view, you have the graph view. The graph view is perfect to see the dependencies between your tasks, if they are correct or not. In addition, you can see at the bottom right corner, the minimap, pretty useful if you have a giant DAG to navigate. Then you have the gun view to spot any task bottleneck in your DAG run. For example, if a task is taking longer than expected, you can see that on the gun view. The longer the bar is, the longer it took to complete the task. Next, the code view. This is helpful to verify that Airflow is using the latest version of your code. It's easy to forget to save a file and then use a previous version of your code. Or remember that by default, Airflow needs 30 seconds to take your updates into account. So the code view is perfect to verify that the code is the latest version. By the way, you can use the parsed at date, which is convenient. Then the logs of your task. Even more important, when you have a task in failure, take a look at the logs first. That's what you can see here. Let's say you have a task in failure and you want to rerun that task. For that, you pick the task in failure and you click on clear task. Here you have different options. The first one is downstream. By default, it is selected. And so all the downstream tasks to this one is API available will be rerun. That's what you can see here, extract BTC price, then store BTC to parquet. But let's say you have upstream tasks as well and for some reason you want to restart those tasks, you can do it by clicking on upstream. And maybe you want to rerun the past task instances of that DAG run and you click on past for that. Or maybe after that DAG run, so you click on future. So you can see the number of tasks that you will rerun at once increases as you choose different options. Recursive is to include sub DAGs and parent DAGs. And finally, only failed is if you want to rerun only the tasks in failure. That can be useful. And as you can see, we have only three tasks in failure or in upstream failed. So let's click on clear. And now if we refresh the page, you can see the known states for those tasks. We are almost, we are done. Another view that I love to use to monitor my DAG runs is the calendar view. And I'm sure you're gonna love it too. So with the calendar view, you can spot any common patterns among your DAG runs. For example, if you have DAG runs failing over the weekends, you will be able to see that on the calendar view. Each square is a day and they are separated by month. And the greener the square, the higher number of successful DAG runs you had for this specific day, and the redder the square, the higher number of failed DAG runs you had for this day. It is as simple as that. So if you see red squares over the weekends, maybe it's worth to take a look at what's going on over the weekends with your DAG. After the calendar, you have the task duration. That view gives the duration of your different tasks over the past n runs. This view lets you find outliers and quickly understand where the time is spent in your DAG over many runs. It is perfect whenever you optimize your tasks and want to see the impacts. In addition, you have task tries. This one is pretty straightforward. You can see how many times your different tasks have been retried over many runs. Then landing times is a bit different than task duration as landing times are calculated from the task scheduled time to the time the task finishes. Whereas with task duration, it's the time it takes to execute the task without taking into account the scheduled time for that same task. Like for task duration, landing times is nice whenever you optimize your tasks and even your scheduler as the scheduled time is taken into account here. Audit log, perfect to track the events or operations that have been taken on your DAG. All right, we are done with most of the views you will use to manage your DAG runs and task instances. Now let's take a look at the top bar and you can see the docs. Take a look at the documentation as well as the Airflow website and the REST API reference. Airflow has a REST API with many routes. I'm sure it can be helpful for you. So take a look at the documentation. It's nicely done. Next, you have the admin and the variables. A variable is key value pair that expects a string value. Variables are useful when you have a value that you want to use at different places, different DAGs and tasks. So you don't have to hard code that same value everywhere. You just create a variable, you put the value in that variable and you fetch that variable 
in the different places. To create a variable, you just need to add a new record and specify a key as well as a value and a description if you want to. I recommend you to always define a description. Under variables, configurations. Usually you won't have access to that, but you can see the configuration of your Airflow instance and the connections. Whenever you want to interact with a tool or a service like AWS, Snowflake, and so on, you need to create a connection. To create a connection, you click on add a new record and depending on the connection type, so again, the service that you use, let's say AWS, you will have different fields to fill. Here, AWS Access Key ID and AWS Secret Access Key. Remember, if you don't see the connection type you want, that means you haven't installed the corresponding Airflow provider. If you want to interact with AWS and you don't see Amazon Web Services here, that means you haven't installed the Airflow provider Amazon. Once you have the connections, you can see the plugins. So whenever you add a new plugin to customize the user interface or to add new hooks, executors, and so on, you will see those plugins here. Under plugins, pools. Pools are useful to limit the concurrency of sets of tasks. By default, all tasks run through the pool default pool, and you can see there is 128 slots. That means you cannot execute more than 128 tasks at the same time, unless you increase that value. And the other thing you can do is to create a new pool, specify the name of that pool, as well as the number of slots, let's say one, and then assign that pool to a set of tasks so they will be executed sequentially one after the other and only this set of tasks while the other tasks will be able to run in parallel. Under pools, you have XCOMs. Maybe you don't know what it is, but an XCOM is the mechanism to share data between your tasks. When a task returns a value, that creates an XCOM that can be pulled by another task so you can share data between your tasks. And basically, the XCOM has a key and a value as well as additional information such as timestamp, DAG ID, task ID, and so on. Okay, so that's it for the admin. You have Browse. Browse is nice to take actions on many things at once. For example, the DAG runs. You can see the list of all DAG runs, and if you want to clear all of them to rerun all the DAG runs, you can do that by clicking on clear the state, or you can delete all the DAG runs by clicking on delete and so on. You can search specific DAG runs by using those filters and you can do pretty much the same things with the jobs, audit logs, task instances, task reschedules, triggers, SLMECs, and so on. The only thing which is a bit different is DAG dependencies. As you can imagine, this page is useful to identify dependencies between your DAGs. You have the legend there with DAG, trigger, sensor, and dataset. Trigger, sensor, and dataset are the three ways of defining dependencies between DAGs in Airflow. And here we have the DAG BTC extract that produces the dataset BTC extract that triggers the DAG BTC transform. If you have another DAG dependency using the trigger DAG run operator or the external task sensor, you will see that on this page. If you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at the video I made about DAG dependencies at the top right corner of this video. All right, next you have security. You can list the users that have access to your Airflow instance as well as their role, for example, here admin. What roles are available? You can take a look at that under list users, you have list roles. And that's the different roles, viewer, user, OP, and so on, with the attached permissions. Under the roles, you have the user statistics. And to be honest, I've never used that page so far, but if you want to have additional information regarding a specific user, you can take a look at this one. Under the user statistics, you have actions, resources, and permissions. If you take a look at the permissions, you can see action and resource. So a permission is composed of an action and a resource. You can see what actions you can take by going to actions and what resources you can interact with by going to resources. And permissions is the list of all permissions you can attach to a specific role. All right, next you have datasets. This one is amazing. Since Airflow 2.4, you have a new concept, datasets. And basically, a dataset represents a piece of data. And when a task updates a dataset, that triggers another DAG. So for example, here, you have the DAG BTC extract with a task that updates the dataset BTC extract, and that triggers the DAG BTC transform. And you can see the different data sets you have in your data pipelines. Keep in mind that you can't see DAG dependencies created with the external task sensor or the trigger DAG operator from this view. You will have to use the DAG dependencies view instead. 
All right, the last view to see from the Airflow UI is the cluster activity view. This one is brand new from 2.7, I believe, and you can monitor your Airflow instance and have this nice overview of what's going on with your task instances, pools, diagrams, and more. All right, that's it about this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I wish you a wonderful day. Take care and see you for another one.